Hey, what's up, Fight Family? This is Contemplate Boxing. Now, as we approach another Fight Saturday and, oddly enough, a Fight Sunday, we can notice that the upset from the most recent Tiafimo Lopez and George Cambosis has begun to play a part in some of the questions being asked between Devin Haney and Gervonta Davis. As Haney uh, prepares and continues to train for Jojo Diaz and Javante Davis prepared for Isak Cruz. Now, while both Devin Haney and Javante Davis are both considered favorites among both fans and odds makers to emerge victorious in their respective bouts, both men had been asked whether or not the November 27th upset of Cambosos over Lopez would at all be on their minds. Now, as a fight fan, I do believe that there is something that everyone in the boxing world can take away and learn from as we approach these upcoming fights. In a recent interview, Gervonta Davis had stated that the Lopez loss reminded him to not enter any fight believing that he had already won. Now, although this would appear to be the most obvious takeaway from such an event, we can actually look through the history of combat sports and the history of combat and war just in general, and we can see multiple cases in which a lesson that seems to be so obvious was actually not heeded. For example, Mike Tyson admitted that he had grossly underestimated and underprepared for James Buster Douglas. Zab Judah had underestimated and was underprepared for Carlos Baldemir. Anthony Joshua had underestimated and was unprepared for Andy Ruiz. And also Andy Ruiz had underestimated and was underprepared for Anthony Joshua in the rematch. Sonny Liston had underestimated and was underprepared for Ali in their first bout. And this list can go on and on, and so long as the earth continues to turn, then we will see more examples of this lesson not being heeded, and we will add more examples and more fights to this particular list. The reality of combat sports is that on any given night, upsets can occur. Whether that upset be due to one punch in the fight, one moment in training, one moment outside of camp, anything can happen. Any underdog can rock the boat and anyone can be victorious. Prior to replacing Rolando Romero to face Gervonta Davis, the boxing world at large had never heard of Isak Cruz. Fans of Davis had never spoken his name prior to him stepping up as a replacement. Very few had really watched and analyzed his fight against Francisco Vargas. And when top lightweights were previously mentioned outside of Lopez, Haney, Davis, Loma, etc., we mentioned Comey, Nakatani, Fort. Linares, Campbell, although he's now retired, etc. Maybe someone here and there would have said Cambosis prior to him becoming champion, but nobody ever said the name Isak Cruz. So with this being the case, I'm actually glad to hear Davis be reminded after seeing what happened to Lopez that anyone can win on any given night. Now, for Haney, the very same lesson should apply. However, in his case, he is fighting a man whose experience and accolades are known and recognized by the boxing community at large. We know that Diaz is a former Olympian. We know his only loss has been against Gary Russell Jr. thus far. And we know that thus far, his resume contains more talented individuals than Devin Haney. Jojo Diaz's resume consists of individuals like Gary Russell Jr., Rene Alvarado, Tevin Farmer, and Andrew Cancio. So while any underdog can rock the boat and turn in an upset performance and any dog can have his day, Jojo Diaz very well may prove to be more dog than most. Now, as a fight fan, very often, uh, our different biases for or against certain fighters, promoters, and or networks will cause us to view an outcome like Lopez Cambosos and say, look, I knew this fighter was a fraud. I knew this fighter was overrated, etc. Now for myself, however, when I look at the upset surrounding that particular fight and I look at the lightweight division as a whole, 
I see a circumstance that may very well be similar to what we witnessed not too long ago at 154 pounds. At fans, we have to remember that it wasn't that long ago that within junior middleweight that the division was replete with talented names such as Jamel Charlo, Erickson Lubin, Tony Harrison, Julian Williams, Erislandi Lara, and Jared Hurd. However, as many of these individuals began to face one another, the titles seemed to be constantly changing hands and all of these guys walked away with a loss. Heard stopped Harrison, who went on to decision Charlo, who later knocked him out in a rematch. Laura was dropped in decision by Harrison, or I'm sorry, by Heard, who later was dropped in decision by Williams, who was then later crushed by Jason Rosario, who was then stopped by Charlo, who fought to a highly disputed draw against Brian Castaño, who very few people had previously even considered. As a fight fan, one of the few differences I think that exists between 154 and 135 is that at 154, these gentlemen were fighting one another. So the boxing world could truly see how closely matched all of these individuals truly were. I do believe that if we saw the same activity at 135, we very well may see that none of these guys are frauds, but rather that they are so closely matched, whether due to style or skills and talent, that any dog can have its day and any underdog can rock the boat. Fight family, let me know what you think. Hey, I hope y'all enjoy the fights tonight and tomorrow. Peace. God bless. Please hit that like, that thumbs up.